Tanner, we know that you're a huge Tom Brady fan. What do you try and emulate from his game? Hmm, that's a good question. I do love Tom Brady. I think the thing I try to emulate is his his clutch ability. The way that he, you know, I don't know the number, but he's you know led so many game winning drives in the fourth quarter overtime. I mean, the, the first time, my first memory of Tom Brady is in the Super Bowl 2001 versus the St. Louis Rams. He drives the team down. They kick the game winning field goal, and then you know he's done that his whole career. And then so that the clutch factor, and then just his his accuracy in the pocket is the way he just stands back there and he's like a surgeon, you know, just, I mean, I think he's like 22 touchdowns, two picks this year. I that's mean, pretty good. Yeah, pretty that's good. Right. So I think that's one of the main things that I love about him. I like that you use the word clutch ability. Yeah. If it's not in Webster's dictionary, yeah, you, it should be. You just put dash ability to any word one. <laughs> clutch ability, right. clutch factor. At large clutch. ability is a word I yeah. use a lot. Swag yeah. ability. Yeah. Are you number 12 because of Tom? Partly. So I was number 11 all through high school. I, I always liked number 11, and then I got to BYU, and 11 was taken. Taron Houck had it. Classic so Taron Houck. Yeah, move. right. No, it's all good. So then I, I had to think, you know, what, what should I be? So I was just thinking, and 12 was available, and then I thought about Tom Brady. Um, also love Aaron Rodgers and stuff. So John Beck. John Beck, yeah. Was I mean, Shady number 12? A, lo a lot of good 12s. So I, I figured, you know what, that's, that's a good number. I'll go, I'll go one up to, to 12. Who's the most famous quarterback you've ever met? Hmm. Probably Cam Newton. I, I had the chance to, I mean, currently, right, you know, I had the chance to meet him at the Under Armour All-America game when I was in high school. He's a, a big dude. You know, it's it's amazing someone of that size can be that athletic and that good at um, at the quarterback position. But so I probably, that's the first one that comes to mind. We've uh, participated with you guys in a lot of the <coughs> uh, fun bowl activities down here. What's been your favorite so far? Oh, man, it's been fun. It's been a good week. This is beautiful. I mean, to get out of the Provo snow, the blizzard, and come to here to San Diego is, is, is pretty awesome. But my favorite so far, probably the zoo. I love animals. I love, I love lions. <laughs> Those were cool. The, the, the jaguars. The, I hate snakes, though. The snakes creep me out. They're the worst, dude. <laughs> yeah. They are the worst. The worst. Oh. <laughs> they just, you know, don't like those. The zoo. The sea world was fun, too. The, um... The Sea Lion Show. I don't know if you guys had a chance to see that. We didn't go to that one. That no, no what, that was that funny? It was pretty funny, yeah. yeah. Pretty good. And I saw Algy Brown get smooched by a beluga yeah, whale, though. That was yeah. cool. That was must-see. Yeah. <laughs> the, the Dolphin Show was cool, too. A lot of fun stuff. It's been a good week. With Tanner Mangum here as BYU is preparing for the Poinsettia Bowl on Wednesday against Wyoming, where is your excitement level to start this game compared to starting last year's game? Because last year it was start number 12 for you. Mm -hmm. This year it's start number one. Yeah, I mean, I think both were high. I mean, I'm, I'm always excited for game time. But uh, you know, I think there's definitely an added bit of excitement for this one just because, it, you know, it is the first start. And, uh, you know, it's it's a great opportunity to to come in and, and, and close out the season for to help, help our team. And But, I mean, I try not to... You know, get get too excited. You know, I, I don't want to get get too hyped. You know, so I just try to stay calm and just focus on on the moment and enjoy it, have fun with it. But I'm I'm feeling good. Practice has been going well. We're working hard. You know, practices has been pretty sharp, and uh, so I think everyone's excited. It's not just me. I think the whole team is ready to go, ready to to go out and, and finish the season strong. And I think uh, fans are excited to watch you start a game, to watch Jamal Williams' final mm -hmm. game. So our Twitter question today is, who will have a greater impact on the outcome of the bowl game for BYU, Tanner Mangum or Jamal Williams? What well, do you think? I'd say Jamal then. You know? <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I mean, really, I mean, he is a, such a, an in integral part of this, of this team because of his impact. If he's on, I mean, that makes it tough to stop. Just because we can, we can go play play action off that. Teams have to account for his running ability, and uh, so you know he's he's huge. You know, and and obviously I'll do my. I know I have a big role as well, but everyone does. So I think that makes that turns to the offensive line. You know, everything starts up front. You know, run game. They got to be able to to create holes, and then pat, you know pass protection. They got to be able to 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 give us time. So um, I, I I'm I'm confident though. I think you know we're feeling good. We're feeling um, you know, confident about our about our ability, confident about our team. So I'm excited. Our stat of the day was that Jamal Williams in the two bowl games he's played in has a combined 89 yards. He'll probably have more than that. We think Hopefully. that's rushing and receiving. By Hopefully, the way. 
that's the, that's the goal, right? So, I mean, can't you know can't predict things. That's you know I've, I've talked about it before with with this offense and the way Coach Detmer calls it. He's very good at adjusting to what the defense gives us. So I'm not going to go out and say, yeah, we're going to throw for for 350, or we're going to rush for you know, or we're going to rush for 200. You just never know. But that's what's great about it is you know got to be uh, ready to adjust. With the run game success that BYU has had this year, and Ty Detmer's emphasis on Look, we want to be balanced. How do you gauge success in the passing game? Like, what would be a successful stat line in the pass game? I think a successful stat line would be over 70% completion percentage and no interceptions. I think that's the main thing. As long as we're completing our passes, taking care of the ball, that's all you can ask for. And that's all Coach Dimer, you know, asks of us is to run the offense, um, take care of the football, and... If, if that's happening, if you're, I mean, if you're over 70%, no turnovers, then you, you're probably in a good position to win the game. Statistically, they're interesting because Wyoming is 105th in scoring defense. That's like the number one stat. How many points do you give up? Mm. But they're 10th in turnovers gained. So mm-hmm. what are you seeing from them? They're giving up points, but they're also uh, creating turnovers. Yeah, I try not to look into those those stats too much just because. Okay, I'll, here, I'll flip this over so you don't look <laughs> <laughs> None of so, this matters. No, I know it because you, <laughs> of course you know, it matters. You watch them on film, and, and they're they fly around. They they create turnovers, like you said, and so sure they you know they've given up some yards, given up some points, but any any you know, I mean, look at our defense. Sometimes you know you have, you have a, a great game. Sometimes you don't have a great game. So you can't like look into that too much because they're they're capable. They're a good team. They they really do fly around. So and they create pressure. So I'm not gonna you know judge them based on their numbers but just really respect them and and you know, they've done a good job and won some games so I definitely respect them for sure. How has preparation for this year's bowl game differed than preparing for last year's bowl game for you? I think it's been different just because now for the first time all season I'm getting all the reps in practice and and last year you know I'd, I'd already played 12 games i you know kind of felt really comfortable confident knew what i was doing um and uh was kind of you know already in a rhythm but now for this year the rhythm kind of started two weeks ago and um so but, but i'm feeling really good i've been able to you know to kind of just dial myself dial myself in and and i don't know i'm, I'm feeling good I'm feeling comfortable. Coach Demers done a good job of helping me, you know, be comfortable with the game plan, helping me understand what what we want to do, and and um, so it, it, I guess it's a little bit different just because you know it is the first start of the year. But I don't know. To me, it's just I'm enjoying it. I'm having fun, and I'm excited to get out there and play. By our count, you're on a 28 nothing run in bowl games, which is pretty good, right? <laughs> have you have you watched rewatched the bowl game to reference anything for this year, or or is that in the past? No, that's in the past. Yeah, I mean that was a year ago now, and it's been a year, man. Yeah, I know it's crazy how fast it goes, but uh, no, I'm not too worried about that. You know, it's just different game, different team, different offense, different offense, exactly. So not a whole lot. I mean, there's obviously something you can learn from every game, but not too concerned about that right now. How can your performance against Wyoming tomorrow affect the off season and what you do during spring ball and over the summer moving towards the 2017 season? Well, I mean, every win gives you momentum, and especially to finish the season on a win would be huge. You know, just give you that that um, that boost going into the off season gives you confidence, gives you uh, you know excitement to to go in and, and get to work and get ready for next year. So um, it means a lot. You know, not just not just for me, but for the whole team. So. We're we're doing our doing our best to to work hard to get ready to go out and take care of business. You know, it's it's football. Every, both teams have that same goal, so it's just a matter of execution, uh, playing hard, playing a full 60 minutes. Coach Atake always talks about you know playing a full 60 minutes, making sure every play we're doing our job. So as, as you know, both teams are going to be doing that. But uh, I mean, if we can stick it out and and uh, again get a win, that'd be huge for our program to you know get a bowl win, get nine wins, and then take that into the offseason. That'd be awesome. The greatest plays in BYU history have happened in Provo, and then second place is San Diego. This place is special, <laughs> yeah. right, with, with BYU football history. True. Do you have a favorite play of BYU football in San Diego from the past of all the great plays? Well, I'd say the, the Miracle Bowl. The 37 ho- years ago yesterday. 
Yeah, I saw that. Pretty uh, crazy. It's awesome. The Holiday Bowl, 1980. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. I mean, I think my parents were at BYU at that time. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so obviously it wasn't there. But, you know, I've seen it and highlights and stuff like that. And, I mean, how can you top that? You know, the, the comeback. I mean, that was a huge comeback. And then the win in that fashion was pretty awesome. And BYU has a pretty good memory at Lincoln Memorial Stadium in Nebraska as well. True. Yeah. Just putting That's that pretty good, there. yeah. Yeah, just, just throwing that I one I remember out. that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think you were involved in that, right? <laughs> <laughs> if I remember correctly. Keep that yeah. one in the yeah. back pocket. Yeah. 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 Tanner, great to talk to you, Same man. We're, rainy day. we're, uh, we're excited for you tomorrow and uh, look forward to what you're doing at Wyoming. Okay, thanks for having me.